Josh Hall trying to dribble out of traffic. Hall brings it across the timeline, high on the left. Josh on the attack against the Mogbo. Inside, laid it in, and the foul. How about the freshman Josh Hall? He goes end to end, and Nevada is back in front, 53-51, with a free throw coming up. This is After Hours with Amy Lawrence. It was an exciting run for the Nevada Wolfpack. Winners of their conference tournament and now into the field of 68, the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2007. Ryan Radke with the call on the Westwood One Radio Network. It's After Hours with Amy Lawrence on CBS Sports Radio and CBSSportsRadio.com. We're excited to spend a few minutes with Eric Musselman, who's the head coach of Nevada, his first head coaching job in the college ranks, though he's been a longtime coach. He certainly is a lifer. Well, coach, thanks so much for a few minutes. What does this feel like for the Nevada basketball family to be back in the tournament after a full decade away? Well, Amy, we're really excited. And, and, uh, you know, we've had a lot of, uh, you know, pressure games in the last five games. We, We finished the regular season where we had to beat Colorado State in order to secure the number one seed in the conference tournament. Um, and, and then that also won us the Mountain West regular season. And and it's really hard in college basketball to win your regular season championship and then follow that up uh, with the conference championship. And we had to win three games in three days. And we couldn't be prouder than what our student athletes have done. And they've really competed and kept focus. And, and uh, it's a great, great day. Uh, uh, here at our university and on campus to uh, to see our name called on Selection Sunday. As you talk about, you all have finished up the year not only as the regular season conference champs, but also as the tournament champions. You've won nine straight games now. So, Coach, what's critical in this last stretch here as you guys have grabbed momentum? Well, I think the biggest thing is just we have really good team chemistry and and the guys believe in one another, and, and kind of a turning point for us, Amy, when we, we were down 25 on the road to New Mexico, and we ended up coming back and winning that game, and I think that it's generated belief when we get down in games, um, and, it, and it's helped us uh, close games out as well, because that game went into overtime, and again, we were on the road, and, and that was our turning point for our guys to believe that you know, no matter what the circumstances are, we always have a chance to win. And, and um, you know, so again, we're, we understand that, that we'll be the underdogs. And, and um, Iowa State's a great, great basketball team, but it's a great challenge for us to head to Milwaukee and, and see, what, see what happens on Thursday. Well, I'm glad you brought that game up. It was in early January. Not only were you down 25, but you were down 14 points with just over a minute to go. And as I was thinking about it, I thought of the Super Bowl where Patriots had to do everything right, but the Atlanta Falcons also had to make a few mistakes. So what do you remember about that final minute as you guys rallied to force overtime? Well, it's interesting, Amy, because uh, Craig Neal is the coach at New Mexico, and he's He's an excellent coach, and he actually played for me for parts of four and a half seasons. And, and when, when we went back and evaluated the tape, New Mexico, they missed some free throws. Um, but having said that, they really didn't do anything wrong. Um, maybe they took a couple shots uh, instead of you know the, the shot clock winding down. But we hit some lucky, miraculous shots, and then we, we ended up getting some defensive stops and and utilized our timeouts to try to stop the game. And, and, uh, and then we, we put them on the foul line. And I, I think there was a lot of things involved. Mainly we didn't quit, but then we also had luck. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> I can only imagine what that was like, though, not only on your bench as you're hitting those threes, but also the fans and everybody in the arena as this is playing out in front of them. Well, well, Amy, don't think we had it completely planned because we had our walk-ins and walk-ons on at one point, and uh, one of our walk-ons, Charlie Tooley, hit a huge shot for us. So it wasn't some mastermind plan on my part, I can tell you that. What an amazing memory for you guys to have. We're speaking with Eric Musselman, head coach of the Nevada Wolfpack, into the NCAA tournament for the first time in a decade, the 12th seed out of the Midwest, and will take on Iowa State in their opening game. 
Uh, you've been part of teams as an assistant coach that have been to the NCAA tournament before. It's your first time as a head coach going through the process in college. What are these next few days like? How do you get ready for a, a stage like this? Well, we got to be really focused and and uh, and treat this game, uh, you know, just as we treated all the games this season. And and um, you know, it's important for our players to really dive in on their own time and watch film on Iowa State. And and uh, we'll try to lay out a game plan in a short time. It's obviously way different than conference play because you know those teams from playing them the year before, and and you play teams twice in your own conference. So um, it's kind of equal ground as far as a preparation standpoint for both Iowa State uh, and Nevada. So, uh, you know, we, we got to just focus and can't be distracted by all the media and such. One of the things that always seems to stand out about matchups between non-power conference schools and teams out of conferences like the Big 12 or the Pac-12 or the Big 10 is the physical nature. Uh, you're going to expect a lot of that physical play from Iowa State. So for you, as the Wolf Pack coming out of your conference, how do you counter that when you know that they're going to be willing to, to bang around inside and to be super physical? Yeah, they'll they'll be physical, and so will we. I, I, you know, the one thing that 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 our team is has you know not backed down from anybody, um, and I think from a physical standpoint, our guys will really compete. Obviously, they have some really really special players on their team, and and some really difficult matchups for us. You know, Monte Morris is is, is a matchup nightmare for anybody. He does such a great job of taking care of the basketball and. And then Iowa State's got great three-point shooters, and and, uh, and and Deontay Burton is a hard matchup at the four spot. And they have guys like Matt Thomas that can really, really stroke the basketball. Solomon Young's a great loose ball getter. So we have a lot of things that we have to discuss between now and Thursday before that ball gets tipped off. I spoke with Mike Dunleavy Sr. not that long ago, the head coach at Tulane, his first college head coaching gig. And I enjoyed hearing him compare the NBA to the college game and the differences in coaching. So I would love to ask you that same question, Coach. What is your favorite thing, your favorite difference between coaching in the NBA, which you did for a lot of years, and now being a head coach at the college level? I think the the thing that I like the most about the college game is the impact that you can have on young student athletes and you're developing their character off the floor. You're trying to teach them uh, about work ethic. It could be work ethic in the classroom. It could be uh, socially. It could be uh, on the basketball court, all those different things. You know, in the NBA, it's a great lifestyle. You're staying in Ritz Carlton's. Your per diem's unbelievable. Um, you're going against the greatest players in the world on a nightly basis. You're going against the greatest coaches on a nightly basis. But having said that, you get on an airplane, you get to the hotel, you really don't see your players at all or have much interaction with them uh, with the exception of at practice, a little bit before practice and a few minutes after because these guys all have families and they're grown men where, you know, I feel like I'm, you know, a semi dad to most of our guys when they're on our campus for, for 10 months out of the year. And so it's a completely different, you know, world in, in the NBA. It's all basketball 24 seven. And in college, it's about much more uh, than just basketball. And you have a way bigger impact on people's lives. I saw a picture on your Twitter. Is it of your daughter, your daughter, Mariah in her cheerleading outfit? How excited is she for this tournament? Mariah Musk, Amy, is loving the dancing part. So she uh, she's ready to dance. She danced before the the uh, announcement of where we were playing, and, and then she came to our little party, and, and she was dancing there. So um, we're all excited. I mean, it's just such a great honor, and it's so fun for the players and our families and, and uh, parents of our players to, to be involved in what's the greatest stage in college basketball uh, during during the year. Well, there certainly is plenty of hard work, not just in the next couple of days, but into the tournament. Also, so much joy associated with March Madness and getting into the field of 68. Eric Musselman, the head coach at Nevada, into the tournament for the first time since 2007. Congratulations on getting to this point. We can't wait to see what happens next, Coach. Thanks so much, Amy. It's always great coming on.